Mr. O'Connor. What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Have you been to court to establish that I you don't, are? I, I didn't have to go to court to be called Murphy or Jones or Smith. Excuse me for answering you this way. That's if all right. a Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is an Irish name, uh, a European name, or the name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. And a yellow person, Chinese is a yellow man, and uh, he has nothing to do or no connection whatsoever with the name Murphy. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. So that when you see a Negro today who's named Johnson, if you go back in his history, you'll find that he was once his grandfather or one of his forefathers was owned by a white man who was named Johnson. His name is Bunch. His, his grandfather was owned by a I white man point. that was uh, named Bunch. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during was slavery. Any, was there any line, uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefather. Yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about the, the status of Elijah Muhammad. First of all, is he ill? I spoke to him today. He is in better health than he has been. He's suffering from asthmatic bronchitis. Is that why he didn't attend your rally on last Tuesday? Yeah, the only reason that he didn't attend was his uh, ill condition. And the weather here, especially on that particular day, was of such nature that it would have been almost insane for him to come. Well, now, did you hold that meeting last Tuesday because it coincided with the uh, general election, the primary election? I think if you study the history of Mr. Muhammad's work and religious work in this country, he's been, we've had our convention on February the 26th every year for, I think, the past 33 years. Well, now, while, while you don't uh, care to discuss your former name or the name that the slave master gave to your antecedents, uh, it is a matter of record that uh, Muhammad's last name was Poole, Elijah Poole. No, that's the name that his slave master gave to his uh, grandfather or great-grandfather, but that's not his name. Well, his mother and father thought when they called him Elijah Poole that that was his name. They right? didn't know any better. Well, if they didn't know any better or not, that, they thought that was his name. Yes, sir, but, sir... So what I'm trying to find out is when did he cease to be Elijah Poole and get to be Elijah Muhammad? In 1931, I think it was, in Detroit, he was taught the true history of our people and made aware at that time that he was wearing an English name, and by not being an Englishman, he looked out of place. And uh, his teacher gave him the name that he's wearing today, Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad. All right, now when did he become what he purports to be in your literature, the son of Allah? I've never heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to as the son the of Allah. The prophet of Allah. Okay. I've never heard him referred to as the prophet of Allah. What do you refer to him Messenger as? of Allah. All right, the messenger of Allah, and I... Appreciate the correction. Yes, I mean, he says that a prophet is somebody who predicts the future, and he's not predicting the future, whereas a messenger is someone who carries a message that has been given to him by one who authors that message. Why, now, who gave him the message, and to whom is it supposed to be delivered? Master W.F. Muhammad, the one who taught him, is the author of the message. He gave it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which makes him the messenger. And he's to deliver that message of truth and righteousness to the 20 million American so-called Negroes, which means he's to teach us the truth which will awaken us and then show us how to live a life of righteousness which will automatically qualify us for recognition as human beings by all other righteous human beings here on this earth. Well, now, one other question uh, with reference to what Mr. Her well, I think to teach a man to hate himself is much more criminal than teaching him to hate someone else. And look at you. Who taught you to hate yourself? Right here, and 
they're open to each and every brother's complete inspection. Get your hands off of that thing there. So you want to see the financial books, huh? Yeah. Well, there it is. There it is. You done see them. Had to meet the jury. What makes the so-called Negro unable to stand on his own two feet? He has no self-confidence. He has no proud confidence in his own race. Because the white man destroyed your and my past. Destroyed our knowledge of our culture. And by having destroyed it, now we don't know we have any achievements any accomplishment. And as long as you can be convinced that you never did anything, you can never do anything. That is your papa talking to you now, Dice. Come on. Just, just hit him one more time. Ah. <laughs> Who's in there? Ain't nobody in here but us chickens. <laughs> This is why the white man, his little children, he tells them about George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, all these white heroes. But he, we, we are never taught, taught about any black hero. Only someone we're shown in history is my grandfather was picking cotton. Picking cotton from the break of dawning till the day I'm through. Oh. Cotton picking don't move me. No. But when it comes to uh, uh, teaching the black people something about great black men who stood their ground, who were scientists, who were uh, uh, civilizers, who were fathers of culture and civilization, the white man has shrewdly written that role out of the textbook. And today, the effect that it has on you and me, we don't think we can stand on our own two feet. Judge Rigdon, can I see you some, please? Well, I'm pretty busy. Yes, yeah, sir, but I just want to ask if you cared about it. Care about what? About over at my house, night before last. Oh, another baby? Yeah, sir, you sure guessed that you heard. What's his name? Oh, we call him L.R. Lies Rigby Livingston. Oh, named him after me, did you? Yes, sir, the Lies Rigby. I told my wife, Ethel, I said, honey, I know Judge Shell gonna be gratified. Well, of course, yes, I appreciate the honor. Yes, sir. I suppose a compliment, and I ought to do something for it. Yes, sir, that's what I thought, sir. You come over yeah, to my I... place tomorrow, and I'll give you a job. Job? Break and leave. Mm -hmm. I asked him to wait. We wake up. We clean up. And we stand up. And once we can stand up like a man on our own feet, we stop begging the white man. And we stop apologizing to the white man. We stop compromising with the white man. Then the world will look at us with recognition and respect. But as long as you run around here wearing the white man's name, begging about you one of the Jones, or one of the Browns, or one of the Smiths, as long as you run around here bragging about your part in this so-called American uh, democracy, then you will always be looked down upon as a chump by the white man. You never will be given recognition nor respect. Your problem will continue to go unsolved, and we'll still be in the same rut or ditch uh, a thousand years from now that we're in right now.